Hello, and welcome to part three of creating Minecraft in Unity. So, we left off here with the ability to create three different kinds of bricks and delete bricks and fall through the floor. But there's only one 20 by 20 by 20 chunk. That's not good. So in this version, in this uh, episode, we're going to learn how to create a world made out of those chunks. Um, we're not going to do any of the terraforming yet. That's going to be next episode, but we're just going to learn how to create a lot of them. So first things first, we're going to need to make this chunk into a prefabricated object. So just drag it down into your assets and then go ahead and name it Chunk Fab. So we don't get it confused with the script, which has the same name. We don't need it here in uh, the scene anymore. But we need a new C Sharp script called Terrain. Let's go ahead and just add that to the camera because we freaking add everything to the camera. And there it is. Let's go ahead and open it up. So, here in Terrain, we'll just go ahead and create a new object, a new uh, uh, attribute for the chunk fab that we just created. So go ahead into down, down into assets and drag it onto the terrain. There we go. And just to show you that it works, let's go ahead and instantiate it. There we are. We've created a clone of ChunkFab. You can see off on the left here, it says ChunkFab clone. Uh, and please remember that my uh, wandering mouse is the fault of the, the recording method I'm using and not uh, Unity's fault. But uh, that's fine enough, but obviously we're going to need a lot of chunk fabs. All right, well, let's go ahead and define a couple of constants we're going to need. Or pseudo constants. Um, and this is just because it's good to avoid magic numbers. Now, I use an object called lists a lot, generic lists. Um, these are better than arrays in my uh, for, for things like this because they allow you to add and delete from them without having to redefine the array. Um, a lot of people want to get the urge to use a two-dimensional array of chunks or even a three-dimensional array of chunks, but that has a lot of drawbacks, so we'll use a list instead. So when we instantiate a chunk, what do we do? We add it to the list. Now, instantiate actually returns a generic object, so we need to cast it as a chunk because it is it it, it is a chunk, but instantiate doesn't doesn't return chunk; it returns generic object. So that should work fine. And when we go back into Unity, there should be no difference because uh, oh, because I spelled something wrong. Chunk, 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 chunk. What did I get wrong? Chuck, where's Chuck? <sighs> ah, spelling errors. This isn't um, edited at all, so... Alright, same thing as it was before. So now what we need to do is we need to create something which actually creates chunks if there need to be chunks created. So let's go ahead and make that. Create chunks if we need to. And then we'll make that public void create chunks if we need to. Um, so we are the camera. This script is on the camera. And that's important because the camera it determines where the player is. Uh, so that's the, that's the thing we need to know. For uh, float x equals transform dot position dot x minus view size. Uh, x is less than or equal to transform dot position dot x plus view size x plus equals chunk size. And then the same for z, because remember that z is our other flat axis. y is vertical. There we go. So now we are just pegging every possible place that there could be a chunk, or pinging every possible place that we could have a chunk, but how do we determine whether there is a chunk at a given place? Well, let's go ahead and public void uh, chunk exists. Uh, that's actually a bool. Uh, float x, float y, float z. 
Um, let's go ahead and get rid of the y. We'll just assume all of our chunks are as tall as they need to be. So we'll just do float x and float z. And uh, to keep it in alphabetical order, we'll put it up here. Ah, not that high. So the way this works is for in a equals zero, a is less than chunks dot count a plus plus. You could also do an iterator. I don't. I don't really care. It's the same either way. Chunks a. Uh, so here we say if chunks a dot uh, transform. Come on, transform dot position dot x. So if all, the x we passed is less than that, or the z we passed is less than that, or the x we passed is greater than or equal to that plus chunk size, or the z is greater than or equal to that. So basically I'm just taking a rectangle and checking to make sure that if any, if we fall outside of the rectangle then that's not the chunk we're looking for. Otherwise it is the chunks we're looking for. Uh, true. If there is nothing, then it's false. See? So if we can find a chunk, we have a chunk. If we can't find a chunk, we don't. So that's the trick. We don't need a two-dimensional grid of chunks because our chunks already have a transform attached to them. We know where they are. So we don't have to be like, oh, well, offset of 2 and 3 means that it's actually a 60, and uh, then you've got to count by the... Uh, using a two-dimensional array is just a nightmare for this. Just use a list and use the transform to determine where the chunks are. So then, over here, we say if chunk, oof, if chunk, oh, come on, chunk exists, x, z, then continue. And hopefully, your version of mono uh, won't screw up as quickly as mine. That's okay, though. So, if it uh, doesn't exist, then go ahead and create it. So what this does is it gives us a integer value, which will be 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, whatever we happen to need. Uh, and it works negative as well. And so we use that to get the coordinates where our chunk is actually going to go, rather than the coordinate space we just checked. So then we do uh, chunks, chunks.add, and then just like up here, chunk instantiate chunk fab. But unlike that top one, we need to tell it where to be. So it turns out instantiate has a couple of variations. And this one allows us to tell it where it's going to go. And we also need to add a quaternion for rotation. Just use the identity quaternion. We're not planning on rotating our chunks. There we are. Pretty easy. Pretty easy, except um, I dropped the ball somewhere here. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, just a spelling error. That uh, ZY erroring never, never makes any sense to me. So, oh, look at that. It works fine. Look at that pop-in. You can see us creating chunks as we march along. Chunk create, chunk create. And as it turns out, if we go into scene view, we can see that we are creating chunks just fine. No problem! It's that easy. But we can't interact with those chunks yet. Um, if we actually try, nothing happens. And the reason is because, remember how back in, I think it was the very first episode, no, second episode, I went into player IO and I created this variable here and I basically stapled a specific chunk to the player? Turns out that was just not good enough. Let's go ahead and create a terrain. So uh, we need to set that here. So terrain, come on, terrain equals get component terrain. Now every time we do something like that, we need to put a requires in, or else we'll sometime forget, and then we'll have a mysterious error that we don't know how to track down. This will cut down on the number of stupid errors we get, and since I get a lot of stupid errors, this is important. So now that we have a terrain, instead of getting our chunk by saying chunk dot set brick, we need to do our 
terrain.getChunk. And the reason it already exists is because this is actually the second take. Easy enough, right? We just get the chunk rather than saying chunk. But over here in terrain, we don't have a get chunk. So let's go ahead and build one. It's the exact same thing as chunk exists. Except that instead of returning a boolean value, we return a chunk. Just like that. The other thing is that you notice how we say get chunk and then set brick, and we use the same x, y, z for set brick. Well, chunk has an array in it that runs from 0 to 20. Uh, it doesn't run from 40 to 60 or from 80 to 100. So over here in chunk, I've taken the liberty of subtracting the chunk's position from the value submitted to it so that we actually get in local chunk space the, the map, uh, the, the tile we're trying to modify. So is that going to work? Let's go ahead and take a look. Oh. Oh, that's not an that's a that's a runtime error from the chunk missing. There we are. So, let's go ahead and run for a little bit. Run like the wind. All right. Works fine. Oh, I uh, clicked on stats. As I said, the mouse error is entirely due to me having to work around Cam Studio. It has nothing to do with how the game actually functions. And as before, but now it's much larger than 20 by 20 by 20. Next episode, we'll learn how to create more complicated chunk uh, terrain, and we'll we'll learn how to actually paint a landscape using a three brick type. So we'll probably have four by then. That's it. Oh, um, since we're going to have four by then, I might as well go ahead and show you me adding in the fourth one. There. That's it.